Usagi Drop starts out like this. Daikichi is at the funeral for his grandfather. At the very end, the family's sitting around and talking about what's going to happen to Reen, the grandfather's illegitimate daughter, whose mother is nowhere to be found. They're talking about her like she's not even there, even though she really is right there, saying things like how she would be an inconvenience to them, or give them a bad image since she's illegitimate. Not once do they think about how Reen feels. They're basically talking about her like she's a smelly piece of garbage that somebody has to take home with them. I mean, it's not like it even has to be permanent. Someone just has to take care of her until possible other, more permanent arrangements can be made. Daikichi's sitting away from the rest of the group, listening to all this bullshit, and is all, Yo, I'm sick of your shit! Fuck all y'all selfish, senile motherfuckers. Reen, don't worry, I got your back. Y'all come crashing my pad. Okay, that's enough of that. You got the idea, right? Basically, in the spur of the moment, Daikichi makes the big decision to take care of a kid. That's about as far as the comedy goes in this review, because this show is just really heartwarming, wholesome, and will make you smile a lot. Let's see, for demographic, it's a Jose, which is targeted at adult women. For genres, we have drama, slice of life, and a bit of comedy dashed in. Usagi Drop is the epitome of taking a deceptively simple sounding concept and making a great story out of it. If you reduce it to its most basic form, the synopsis is just this. Daikichi's grandfather dies, and nobody wants to take care of his illegitimate daughter, so he steps up to the job. It doesn't exactly sound like the most riveting setup in the world, so it's pretty easy for people to just pass it up, which is a huge mistake, because it really is executed brilliantly. A lot of the events of the show revolve around what's essentially Daikichi's crash course in taking care of a child. He doesn't have any experience with it, so sometimes he has to ask for advice, or think about how he was raised, or just rely on his own discretion on the spot to get him through ordeals. The realism in the show really shines through in how superficially simple these events may seem, but in reality, how they often cause big problems, especially from the perspective of a good parent or guardian who worries a lot over their kids' problems, sometimes a little too much. The main overarching conflict that it focuses on is about Daikichi searching for and dealing with Reen's mother, who basically didn't want anything to do with her, and Daikichi can't see how anyone would abandon Reen. The events surrounding this conflict serve as great sources for character development, both for Daikichi and her mother. This is also the biggest source of drama in this series. If you don't have an idea about how huge it is that Daikichi made that decision, suffice to say that taking care of a kid requires a lot of work and a lot of selflessness. It's impossible not to admire him for the concessions that he makes in his lifestyle, both large and small to accommodate Reen. These concessions range from asking to get reassigned in his job to a position that won't require him to work overtime, to simply taking her to a festival that he would never have gone to alone. Many people would not be willing to give up even some little things in their lives like he does, much less many things. Daikichi is basically a hugely underrated character and an uber manly man. Reen is a realistic six-year-old girl who goes through things most kids go through at some point, like other kids making fun of her at school. Apparently, Granddad raised her pretty well because she's well-behaved, responsible, and surprisingly mature for a girl her age. However, she's still at a tender point in her life where she has trouble truly understanding the concept of death. She exudes curiosity as she experiences a lot of things for the first time, and reacts to new things exactly how a real little girl would. Reen's probably the most adorable kid I've ever seen in any media ever. She's one of the proofs that you can have cute little girls in anime without turning them into fat material for pedophiles. And if you've seen my Papa Kiki slash Loli video, I made the point how it's great that they had a 10 year old girl voice Reen to make her sound realistic, rather than that unrealistic pedo bait lowly bullshit. In fact, every kid in the show is voiced by a kid. Good on you, Usagi Drop. Good to know there are still people out there that view kids as actual kids and not something to be utilized for pedo food. Daikichi and Reen go through a lot of things together and learn a lot from each other. Daikichi himself even comments that he isn't sure whether she's learning more from him or he's learning more from her. The side characters are very well done. Our two mains are influenced by them, and also have an effect on them themselves. They're just about as important for defining the main characters as Daikichi and Reen are on each other. The art is a little different, but actually fits the overall tone of the show perfectly. The art kind of looks like it was drawn with colored pencils and filled in with watercolors. It may sound simple, but it's extremely effective. There's a good amount of detail given to motions, even bouncing hair or leaves blowing in the breeze. The character designs are realistic to match the overall sense of realism. It's quite a refreshing change from the usual shiny and overly bright and colorful art styles that are seriously everywhere nowadays. I already talked about how awesome it is that they cast actual kids to play kid characters, but I guess I didn't talk about how good a job they do. The Seiyu are just great in general. Everyone sounds natural, and not a single line feels forced or contrived, both in writing or delivery. 
I would be really surprised if these roles didn't open up big avenues for these kids for future endeavors. Piano, string, and wind instruments make up the majority of the soundtrack. They're simple, but superbly composed, and they always use the perfect song for each scene. The opening and ending themes fit the show nicely. The sequences themselves aren't anything impressive, but I recommend sitting through them each at least once for the lyrics. I was talking to someone who said that Usagi Draw basically makes other slice of life look bad to an extent. I agree, although I'd rather amend that statement to say it's to all extents. When you compare it to a show about trivial things like k well, there's not really any comparison. I don't understand how a show that's literally just a mindless moe blob fest is so much more popular than Usagi Drop. Oh wait, that's exactly why. It's a mindless moe blob fest. Why would I watch a show about good characters with depth and development, and a story with actual content and substance, when I could just turn off my brain and watch cute girls doing cute but pointless things? Shit, my life priorities have been fucked up all along. Time to go watch k with my drool bucket. It's hard to find good slice of life anime with actual substance and purpose that aren't just about pointless and trivial matters and don't have flat characters. If you like this show, I recommend Clannad After Story because it's pretty much the closest thing I can think of when it comes to coming to terms with taking care of a kid. I also recommend Kobato if you're just looking for generally heartwarming dramas. Usagi Drop simply helps restore my hope in humanity. It gives me hope that there are still good people out there somewhere. It's one of the rare diamonds you have to pick out of the stream of general fecal matter that flows out of the anime industry. A result of not just copping out and going for a cheap cash grab that requires no writing ability or creativity. The only problem I could really see anyone having with the show is that every character is ultimately good deep down, even the ones that don't seem to be. Most of the characters are just pretty kind in general. This is probably the only unrealistic aspect of the show, since in reality, people you find just generally aren't that friendly and pleasant. However, I had no problem with this idealism, since the show is defined by heartwarming, and I feel that having to pay attention to mean characters would derail the overall tone of the show. As a critic, it easily gets a 9. As a fanboy, it's still a 9. The specials are basically just four cute little five minute short stories that chronologically take place in between the episodes. There's no drama, no real hardship, which is fine, they're just good wholesome fun. Plenty more Dawes to be had. If you like the series, these are something you just need to watch. Usagi Drop is an adaptation of a manga, which is divided into two halves. The anime is an adaptation of the first half. I'm really glad that they decided not to do the second half, because it would seriously ruin the whole thing. I'm not sure what the fuck the writer was thinking. After a time skip, Rin is now 15, and there's this whole ordeal with her feelings for Koki, but she also feels attached to Daikichi in more ways than are healthy. Of course, the writer cops out with a huge bullshit excuse that she actually isn't related to Daikichi by blood. Even though that was such a huge aspect of the story and an established fact in the first half, it ends with her deciding she wants to stay with Daikichi forever. So fucked up on so many levels. Seriously, don't read it. I just saved you the trouble. And I don't care that I spoiled it either, since it's awful and you shouldn't read it. It doesn't seem likely that it will ever get an anime adaptation either. But if it does, I'm not sure what I'd do. Avoid it because it would make me rage, or watch it so I could rage at it for how fucking stupid it is.